I would not be sitting here tonight were it not for Liz Moynihan, who drew her last breath this morning at age 94. That she died on election day is fitting for a woman who dedicated her life to making this country better through elections, beginning with President John F. Kennedy's campaigns. This is the first time I saw the word Moynihan on a ticket, a train ticket from Washington, D.C., with my destination listed as Moynihan Train Hall at Penn Station in New York City. I spent the entire three hours on that train staring at that word. Moynihan, and out the window, and back to that word, Moynihan. As I marveled at how lucky I was that Liz Moynihan decided to change my life. Elizabeth Brennan Moynihan was the love of Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan's life. She was also the campaign manager of his 1988 re-election campaign. I was a writer then, the author of one book, just getting started in screenwriting, when I became a striking member of the Writers Guild, which was at the beginning of one of our longest strikes. Knowing I was desperately available because of the writer's strike, Liz Moynihan asked me to join her in the re-election campaign. I was reluctant. I didn't know anything about politics but I needed a paycheck. The Moynihans knew what it was like to need a paycheck. Pat Moynihan's mother was a bartender in Hell's Kitchen while he was a shoeshine boy in Times Square. I decided to take the paycheck and did next to nothing for it, just agreed with Liz Moynihan's good ideas. Every good thing in my work life since then has been because Liz Moynihan decided to change the course of my life. She wasn't just her husband's campaign manager, she was his career manager. In the 1960s, Liz Moynihan was very disappointed to hear that Harvard University's offer to Professor Moynihan did not include tenure. Liz got involved and Professor Moynihan got tenure. From his position as a tenured Harvard professor, Pat Moynihan went back and forth to government as ambassador to India, ambassador to the United Nations. He served in four consecutive administrations of both parties, beginning with President John F. Kennedy. When President Kennedy was assassinated at the White House that day, reporter Mary McGrory said through tears, will never laugh again, to which Pat Moynihan, through his tears, replied, oh, we'll laugh again, but we'll never be young again. He was 36 years old. Liz was 34. They left Washington after that, thinking they might never come back. When I see that word, Moynihan, on a train ticket, and when I see the name on the Daniel Patrick Moynihan Federal Courthouse in Manhattan, I wonder, would anything be named for Pat were it not for Liz? How could he have become Ambassador Moynihan, Senator Moynihan, without Liz? When Pat was chairman of the Senate Finance Committee and I was the chief of staff of the committee with a heavy legislative agenda, the three of us had dinner a few nights a week and Liz was always in the thick of our strategy sessions. Liz could get very angry with Pat when he seemed to be drifting from her advice. He never got angry with her. He would always get very quiet in the face of her anger which always passed eventually and ended in laughter. I was never uncomfortable in those moments because that's when I got to see the real glue of their lifetime romance. In anger, Liz was loud. 
Pat was silent, and both were always respectful and loving. Liz outlived Pat by 20 years. She never stopped thinking about him. We never stopped talking about him. When I visited Liz on Sunday, she was sleeping peacefully. The only sound in the room when I was alone with her was the sound of the New York City Marathon finish line, which was right outside her second floor window. Liz had this photograph at that window across the room from her bed. The sound of triumphant marathoners who just finished running 26 miles. The sound of people at their physical peak coming through the window of a deathbed. Elizabeth Brennan Moynihan's marathon was over too. Like the runners on the street on the other side of that photograph, Liz was in the loving embrace of family and friends. She was at the finish line.